Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So I hope you guys are having a great day. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new series that I'm going to try to do for you all. Basically, I want to cover full stack development using like vanilla JS. Now the goal of this tutorial series is basically show you from like a beginner's perspective how you can actually get into building a full stack application, right? So I'm going to kind of run you through, you know, how you can use HTML to build out the structure of a website, how to use CSS to style that website how to maybe use JavaScript to add some dynamic elements to the website or some dynamic features. Um, we're going to be talking about Node.js for the backend and maybe bring in like Express.js to write a really simple REST API. And we are also going to be bringing in MongoDB just so I can show you how you can potentially store and retrieve data from a database. So I know I just said a bunch of key terms that might be confusing if you're a beginner. So don't worry, we are going to cover all those terms later on. Um, but I do just want to keep on saying some of these terminologies that are used all the time in web development, uh, just so that you, you know, you get familiar with them and you're not so intimidated by them if I continue to say them. So what I want to do here is I want to outline in this video what full stack development is, right? You might have heard the term full stack developer, but what exactly does that mean? So when it comes to web applications, there's typically two main parts of the app. There's the front end, which is basically what you're seeing here. I have Chrome loaded up and in my Chrome browser, it's rendering a application. OK, so this is a web application draw.io and really behind the scenes. That's just a program that someone wrote using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And that's downloaded when I try to go to this URL and displayed for the user here and they can actually like interact with it. They could change views and do some cool stuff. So again, this is like the front end part of full stack development. Anything that the user can see and interact with, that is considered the front end of your web application. Now, I personally like starting with the front end when I'm doing like tutorials, because it's really easy for a beginner to see their changes update live, right? It's much easier, in my opinion, for someone to like type in some button code, click save, and go to their browser and see that button show up. Backend development doesn't really have that visual feedback loop, so it's a little bit harder to grasp. Backend development clicked easier for me for some reason. I think it's because I think more abstract, but I think for a lot of people, front-end development just makes more sense and it's more intuitive. So in this whole series, I'm gonna start with showing you how to do like front-end development using HTML, CSS, and vanilla JS, just to build out a really simple CRUD application. And then we're going to kind of build upon it. And as we're going through building out the front end application, I'm going to touch on some of the most important concepts that I think a beginner needs to know. All right, so that last point is really important, right? There's a ton of different things you can learn when trying to learn how to program as a web developer, right? So just learning HTML by itself, like there's hundreds of different elements or tags you can use. And on those tags, they all have different attributes you can attach to them. So my goal is to just distill the most essential or basic building blocks that you might need in terms of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript so that you can build something and not feel so overwhelmed. All right, so what we just talked about was the browser here. So this is like the front end, and I'm going to do diagrams probably out through the series because I think diagrams really help drive some points home into people's um, heads. And so let's just pretend the front end, I'll just put like browser here. Uh, I might need to zoom in. Make that like 18 point. So I'll do front end is here and I'll put like browser. Now in here, we typically have the internet, right? So the internet is what is going to basically host the files that your browser is going to download. So that's kind of an important topic I need to talk about when it comes to full stack development. So again, like I said, I just kind of gave you an overview of what the front end development is. It's basically anything the user can see and interact with. And then also that's connected to like the internet. Okay. So we're going to cover this stuff more in detail, like later on in the series, but I just want to give you a really high level overview. So you understand like what's kind of going on. I think a lot of these tutorials out there just show you how to code and they haven't actually talked about like the overarching purpose of a lot of this stuff. So I hope I can do better with explaining that stuff. So that's the front end, right? But there's another key aspect to full stack development and that is the back end. So let's go ahead and make another circle here. And let's just try to explain the back end as well. So I'm going to do back end here. So really these should be double arrows. So let me just go ahead and put an arrow here and I will put an arrow here. 
So to kind of go back to the example, let's say we go to a website like google.com, right? So when you type into the search bar and you click search, like if I were to search like JavaScript tutorials and press enter, behind the scenes, that's, that's actually fetching data from something called a backend, right? That could be like a REST API. That could be like a GraphQL um, endpoint. But again, the high level overview is that there's something out there on the internet, like a server, where your front end application can use the built in functionality of your browser to fetch data from the back end and then use that data to basically render out views. So to kind of give you in a good overview, like in this example, we did a search and that went off to the internet and the internet sent back maybe a list of some data, right? So some results. So in this example, we see that it listed out all of these different links that we can click in Google, and then the user can click on these and kind of get navigated to a new application, all right? So hopefully if you're watching the series or you plan to watch this series, you already have an okay understanding of like computers, like using a browser, maybe installing software. I'm not gonna kind of hand hold you through that process. If I tell you to install VS Code, you should know how to do it. Um, there's other tutorials out there if you ever feel like I'm not walking you through some of that stuff. So again, what is the backend doing, right? So I talked about the browser fetching data. What is the backend actually doing? So typically the backend in a web application could be written in any type of language. Like a lot of them are written in like Go, you have Java, you have Python, you have JavaScript. Well, technically you have Node. C Sharp, there's terms like ASP.NET. There's a ton of different ways to build out a backend application, but they all boil down to basically the same thing, which is accepting requests from browsers or clients and sending back data. So in that example, the browser on google.com made a request to a backend. The service ran some code and it probably talked to something called a database. Okay, so let me just go ahead and make a database here. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put database here. Let me expand the font to 18 so you guys can read it. And again, this is going to talk to a database and the backend's gonna say, hey, a user just did a search for JavaScript tutorials. I need to fetch all the links related to JavaScript tutorials from my database. All right, so the database is just in a really efficient system, right? So this is like, for example, Postgres or MySQL, this is an application that has been worked on for years. We're talking like 10, 20, 30 years. Um, you might wanna fact check me, I'm not sure how many years, but they've been around for a long time. But basically they're really efficient applications for storing and retrieving data from a computer or a disk. Okay, so usually a database behind the scenes, that might be storing to, I don't know, hard drives or something like that. I don't want to get into too much of the details of all this, but if you imagine your computer, your computer has hard drives on it, right? You usually have a hard drive. It could be a solid state or a, a physical actual like spinning disk hard drive. But a database is something that's really efficient at basically taking data and storing it to a place that it can later retrieve. And the key aspects of a database usually is that the data is persisted. So if I go here and I were to restart my SQL server or restart my MongoDB database, all that data was persisted to disk somewhere so that later on people can still fetch it after restarting the service. So I know this is kind of advanced. I might be talking about topics that aren't really important when it comes to a beginner. But again, I just want to throw some high level terms at you so that you have a bigger, better understanding or a high level overview of how, how all this stuff kind of works together. So if we zoom out a little bit, that was a lot. Let me zoom out a little bit. This is kind of like the full stack um, that you might think of if you're a beginner, okay? Now, as you become more advanced, there's gonna be a lot more services that might be on your backend. You might have like a load balance backend of like hundreds of servers connecting to clusters of databases using like event queues and message brokers and stuff. But when it comes to just the beginner stuff, well, when it comes to a beginner for full stack tutorial, usually you have a front end application that's gonna run in your browser like Chrome, that's gonna to connect to a back end to get some data or save some data. And that data is gonna be stored to a database, whether it be MongoDB, MySQL, uh, Postgres, et cetera. There's a lot of different databases out there. This is like some behind the scenes information you don't really need to know about, but just note that a database stores data so that your back end or your application 
and fetch it back later and kind of do queries on it. All right, so I hope that was a good overview of like what full stack applications are made up of. Now, the main reason I want to do a full stack tutorial and why I suggest that you also become a full stack developer is because although some of this stuff is confusing and it might take some time to learn, the more you understand about the entire system, the better you are going to be as a programmer. Okay, there's people out there who just want to work in the front end. They just want to work on their, you know, the front end of the website. And that's cool if that's what they like to do. But there are benefits to understanding like where that data is stored or how that data is stored. Because sometimes there's things in the UI that you want to implement, but the back end does not support that implementation because it's too complex. Right. So that's why we like typically do like pagination in the front end because the back end can't handle sending all that data over in one payload. It's a waste of resources. It's a waste of network requests. Like even talking about the networking of an application is important, right? There's only so much data you can send across the wire before the application comes to a crawling halt, right? If you were to use an application on your phone and you're like out in, out, in, out in the country, it might take a long time to load 3,000 records, right? So you have to understand how everything kind of works and not just focus in on one thing to become a better developer. All right, so I kind of want to break this down one more time a little bit further just so that I don't leave you all in the dark. So let's just go ahead and talk about what is the front end made up of. So basically that's created from HTML. So uh, let's see if I can kind of draw some arrows. HTML and then CSS. That is what you're going to be using to style your application. HTML is like the actual skeleton or the structure of your web application. And then finally you have um, JavaScript. Okay. Let me just put like JavaScript here. All right. So this graph is kind of, kind of messy and ugly, but if you notice here, the front end is typically composed of three different types of technologies. You have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We're going to dive into details on all those later on in the series. But I just want you to know those key terms. Basically, HTML is the structure or skeleton of your application that kind of defines like, OK, for example, this whole part right here might be a header um, component. And then CSS is what styles that. So to make this button orange, right, that's CSS that's applied to the HTML to kind of give it different stylings. Maybe you want to increase the font size. Maybe you want to increase some padding or margin between these HTML DOM elements. Um, and then finally, JavaScript is like the dynamic interaction of the page. OK, so like examples over here on the right, there's a gradient checkbox. If I click it, it changes something dynamically on the page, right? Also with the fill. So JavaScript is basically used to listen for user interaction and it's going to change how the application works based on how the user is clicking stuff. I just messed up my styles there, but I think it's OK. All right. I'm just I'm just touching on like the main three. There's a ton of other technologies that are related to the front end. Like you might have heard keywords such as like view, react, parcel, webpack. Let me just name drop a bunch of other things. But all in all, these are the necessities. HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Those are the main components of every web application. And if you focus in on learn those pretty well, it makes it a lot easier to learn these other frameworks and libraries that everyone is talking about. All right, so let's move on real quick to the back end. So the back end, at least in this series, I'm going to be using Node, which is just a runtime that can execute JavaScript to deal like server, to deal with like server applications or just, you know, desktop applications. So typically when doing Node development, we use a library called Express, and that is just a library to basically allow computers to connect to your servers to get information and store information, right? So remember in the example with Google, the browser needs to connect to an actual running machine, which is called a server. And we use a library called Express, typically. There's other ones out there, but Express is what we're going to be using in this tutorial to basically handle those requests, maybe fetch some stuff from a database, store some stuff from a database, do some type of authentication, authorization. Um, all these terms, again, they might be a little advanced, but I'm just giving you a high level overview so don't feel intimidated or scared. We're going to talk about them later. And then lastly, again, we have the database, which is could be running on the same server or it could be running on a different server. And that is used for storing data or retrieving data. So these are the, the kind of like what I'm going to be talking about, like a zoom out. These are the main concepts I'm going to talk about in this 
tutorial series. So if you're interested in learning these things and how I can kind of build a full stack application using these, be sure to stick around. Okay, so these are all really important to learn if you're a beginner and hopefully I can help you learn them at a nice, decent pace and answer whatever questions that you might have about full stack development. All right, so I will catch you next time in the next video, which I'm going to actually start talking about how a program works, right? Before I dive into the lower level details of HTML and CSS and JavaScript, I want to talk more about a program and how it reads to files and how it parses files and does stuff, okay? So stick around and thanks for watching.